Welcome once again to the 13 Nights of Halloween. Hi everybody, welcome to a... Do we don't even call these That Gets My Goat, right? Do we just call it the 13 Nights? Do we call it That Gets My Goat, don't we? It's like I guess, but we don't count that gets it my in goat. the numbers. Yeah, it doesn't numbers. go in the numbers. But That Gets My Goat... Okay, let me start over. We start it again. Hi everybody, welcome to a That Gets My Goat event. Wait, let me start again. Let me start it again. Hi everybody, welcome to the Dune Steve's That Gets My Goat. It's a, it's a special That Gets My Goat event called the 13 Nights of Halloween. As he usually will have like a little introduction thing, I don't know. Yeah, what we'll do on that. Happy Halloween! Welcome to our 13 Nights. Today we're just going to do an intro to spookiness, um, which I think is the name of this year's community Halloween special. But Wait, is community still in the air? I, uh, you know, I don't know. If it is... Didn't it go to like Amazon.com or something like that? <laughs> I somebody? think so, yeah. Like Yahoo or somebody picked it up. But I think it's still sort of around somehow. Okay, if you say so. But Troy is no longer there. Yeah, I heard Shirley's left the show. Oh, Shirley's gone too? You're running thin there. Anyways, basically this is a special event that we do each Halloween where we do 13 special episodes of That Gets My Goat in which we talk about Halloween-related subjects. Um, And just whatever the, the thing strikes us you know whatever it is that we're going to talk about they're all over the map some are about scary things and some are about just halloween related things and so on and so forth um well let me let me start off by asking you do you enjoy doing these 13 episode marathon things or is this just something you do to placate me i tolerate them um no i like them i i have a good time i'm unfortunately not as into the whole Halloween and the macabre and that kind of stuff as you. Like, I didn't grow up watching tons and tons and tons of horror movies like you did. And when I would dress for Halloween, I wouldn't always like, okay, what's the spookiest, scariest costume I can do? I'm not going like, to dress... What's the sluttiest costume Yeah, I can see, that's what I picked grade. was the sluttiest costumes. And you... <laughs> So yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm not as expert at it as you are, unfortunately. But I still enjoy talking about this stuff, and and I have a lot of memories from Halloween. So, unfortunately, we've shared all those already. Yeah. So um, now we're going to start sharing other people's memories that we don't know. Is this the third or is this it's the fourth? The third. Year Wait, no. This is this is the thirteenth annual thirteen nights of <laughs> Halloween. That's good. I usually we'll start these well, well in advance because I'll, I'll say, hey, a little over a month from now, October is going to begin, and so we uh, we need to do some thirteen nights of Halloween, and so we'll record a couple in very end of August, record a bunch in September, and then you know finish it up right at the very beginning of October, so that I have plenty of time to edit them in time for these last thirteen days leading up to the thirty first. But everything has conspired against us in this case. Uh, we haven't been able to get together or maybe i just haven't had the energy to yeah we are just over a week to to the point where we need to start releasing these episodes so it's a good thing we're recording today and not tomorrow so that's what you've got in store for you 13 nights of awesome halloweenness well i don't know if it's awesome see that's what i was giving you guys a caveat that we didn't i didn't have weeks and weeks to plan it out and now right right now you're thinking well, you had weeks to plan out the piss poor stuff you guys did <laughs> in the previous years. But yeah, we're, we're going to try and sit down and get as many of them done today as possible so that there's plenty of time to edit them and uh, get them out on time. I did briefly consider doing the six nights of Halloween or something weak like that because I just knew that we wouldn't have, you know, the time to dedicate to it and the attention. To dedicate to it. So I, I love this season and I love, you know, preparing for all this and decorating the yard and, you know, a very spooky episode of Blossom or, 
or whatever it is. It's just the, 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 this season is really cool. Um, yeah, but I, I'm of two minds because winter is coming. Yeah. Which is our words. And with it, you know, the, uh, the guarantee, the threat that one day we will die. But at the same time, skull, there's this. Skull, skull, skull. Yeah, you will die. <laughs> the, uh, but at the same time, uh, there's just all of this really delightful fun and, 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 you know, the, the orange and the, the, the costumes and, and, you know, just hearing Michael Jackson's thriller the one time they carted out and, and all that stuff. So, so anyhow, I just, uh, I am a big fan of Halloween. I'm a fan of the season. And so once again, you know, I'm forcing you to do this. Yeah, I'm really not a fan of it. I hate it. But you force me to do this every year. 13 years now we're going on. It's 13th annual. Well, 13 oh. years I've had these pictures <laughs> that will leak out if you do not please me with this, this marathon. Yeah, so I, I shall do my best. But um, sadly, <laughs> this is not the first time we've recorded this. Oh, yes. This I'm... is actually a rerun we're recording. And, and I was worried last week when we recorded this the first time that we would repeat a lot of stories, that we would say things that we had already said before, because as you have said, we've done these for years, many episodes in a row, struggling, trying to find something to say, and then, you know, here we are again trying to do it again, and it's inevitable that maybe you tell the same stories or, or make the same comments about your childhood or about, you know, oh, I used to love this, or oh, you know what really scared me? And I, I just hope that nobody rolls their eyes and it's like, oh, shoot, I've heard this story before. I mean, I, I would hope it's the opposite. I hope they were like, oh, oh, I hope he tells this. Oh, he's going to tell that story. Yeah, again. and this time around, we'll embellish them with completely uh, new details, probably. Ones that didn't actually happen, but, you know, they make the story sound better. So, so yeah, it'll be... And besides, this is now a rerun because we accidentally did not... Act, we didn't actually press the record button when we thought we'd press the record button, or we pressed it twice or whatever the yeah. heck happened so See, I, I was editing the very first episode intro to spookiness and the battery had died on us just you know a tiny bit into the first episode and so we exchanged the battery and i guess i had pushed record immediately and put it up here and so the recording is about 12 seconds of us saying okay so uh where were we what? oh yeah okay we're gonna start ready i'm pushing record and then it went dead so i'd actually stopped the recording when i pushed record and then we talked for an hour <laughs> and none of it was recorded and it's just heartbreaking about that but but more importantly it's less time we have before these have to hit right so unfortunately the people that like these are the ones that are really going to suffer i mean we're suffering because i'm making you do it again but we're going to do one fewer episode than we would otherwise have so the the hour that we talked last week which was originally episode one is going to be episode one and episode two so i'm sorry but uh one of the things that i have observed in getting older is that christmas seems to be for kids and you get to a certain age and you're like, just ah, like screw uh, christmas but just like the conway twitty song says sorry to interrupt go on there's a conway twitty song that's... yes it's called christmas is for kids that guy yeah um i agree well and, and you know as the great pat benatar taught us hell is for children yeah so as well. a lot of things are for um, kids but like. but once you have kids or once you're around kids you start to become re-energized about christmas and i wonder if having children that get excited about oh what am i we're we gonna oh we're we gonna go trick-or-treating what are we gonna carve these pumpkins and all that does that uh, make you like halloween more because you're seeing it through the eyes of, of your kids yeah uh, so much more. Halloween is also for kids, to an extent, at least. Um, well, I mean, it's it's for Lord Satan. <laughs> but, I mean, we all get to partake in his great holiday. I guess, it, I think originally, well, I don't know about originally. We did talk about this in previous uh, iterations of this uh, marathon. What was the origins of Halloween and stuff, and... The origins were all over the place, but I would say within like the last, about 50 years ago or so, Halloween became a thing for kids, where kids would go out wearing their costumes, they'd get candy, they trick-or-treat, and it was all about that, 
And adults were just like, oh, I got to sit around the house and answer the door a hundred damn times in the day. F kids. But as the years have gone by, and, I, and maybe it's just a symptom of our generation or something like that, because we never really grew up. Uh, it's more for adults than it is for kids. I actually did a, a news story the other day where they were talking about how much money is spent on Halloween. And it was, you know, a lot of different stuff. But one of the figures that they threw out was, in America, $1.4 billion are spent on Halloween costumes for children. $1.6 billion is spent for Halloween costumes for adults. Oh my goodness, really? It is more now for adults than for children. And I, I was thinking about that, thinking, well, That wow. makes no sense. I was thinking, Because well, everybody, oh, everybody around here has 15 kids, like your parents do. <laughs> yeah, but... There are so many more adults. I mean, when you think about it, you got ages like, what, 2 to 12 or something. Well, I guess probably everybody even dresses up their babies. So we'll just say 0 to zero to 12 or so is where kids will dress up. And at a certain point, I mean, and it, I think it more infects boys than girls. They become too cool to dress up on Halloween. And boys might go out and cause trouble or something, or throw eggs or break people's pumpkins or whatever the hell they do. Girls, I don't know what they do to hang out and watch scary movies. Sometimes maybe even boys come. But at a certain point, the boys are like, oh, you know what? I'm not too cool after all. I want to dress up in a Halloween costume at a Halloween party that I'm going to. And they start dressing up again. And then you've got like 20, age 20 or age 18 or so, all the way through to... I don't know when, but older than us, so it's a, a much larger slice of people, I would think. And on top of that, adults tend to spend probably more on their costume. Their costumes probably cost more to begin with, even if you get the crappy ones. But if your adults will, like, get a nice one and, you know, or they'll buy a bunch of crap to go with it or, or etc. So it makes sense to me i think and i think it's probably just going to keep going because i think it may even be getting to the point where the, the teenagers will stop being like oh i'm too cool to wear a costume they'll wear it you know they'll go they'll find something to do with it that's i think the biggest problem for the poor teenagers the, the boys that are like 12 years old they're too old to trick or treat because that's like for the kids but they don't really have a a social structure in place for themselves yet so they'll have somewhere to go in their costume you don't want to buy a costume and then just sit around the house all night long and hand out you know candy in it or something but anyways that's not something that we said the first time around i'm, I'm veering us into a totally new and wretched direction well but no that's fine see this would have been a different episode if i because you know as uh, as of tonight, we're not done recording the 13 Nights of Halloween, so you probably still would have brought it up, but it wouldn't have been part of the first episode. Right. And, yeah, as a kid, I wasn't able to buy masks or any of that happy crappy for myself. You know, I was dependent on my parents, and once I I got old enough to just buy whatever I wanted for myself, yeah, it, I spend so much more money <laughs> on me. And, you know, you and I have this in common where we'll take our kids to these comic conventions or whatever. And so maybe if your kid was Iron Man or whatever for Halloween, he'll get another chance to wear that costume. It's not just a one night and then you throw it away or you put it in the play clothes drawer or whatever like it used to be. Yeah, that is one good thing about going to a convention or something like that. You know, if you get a costume for Halloween, I actually have... A costume I forced my wife one year, and this is many years ago now, to sew a Jedi Knight costume for me. And when she was done, she was like, why the hell did I do that? You're going to wear this tonight and then never again. And that was a lot, a lot of work. And then she sobbed in the corner for an hour. And it was pretty sad, really. But the funny thing is, because I'm an adult, I got lots of years to wear this costume i wore it again to work one year and now i still have it i could wear it to a convention i've got you know a few years down the line i could wear it another time 
that's one of those things that's cool about adults and costumes is you can keep recycling them. You don't have to. You're not going to grow out of it by next year, although I am growing outwards, so that might actually happen. I may, The good thing is Jedi Knight robes are voluminous and kind of flowy, so I'm okay for a little while, but, you know, at a certain point, people are not going to believe. They're like, Jedis can't be that fat. I'm sorry. It's just not believable. Were there no fat Jedi? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I bet there might have been. There was all sorts of alien Jedis, so maybe some of them were... Maybe they had a hut, a Jedi hut. What do you think? Are the Jedi, are the huts only gangsters? <laughs> That's a cool thing about, you know, adult costumes is that. So... Well, when you mentioned adult costumes, instantly I thought of... One time we did the topic of slutty... Halloween costumes. Yeah. And how great that is. Uh, today I read an article that was just talking about how awful that is and how inappropriate. And I nearly sent it to you because we always laugh about, you know, that, that you can make anything slutty. Yeah. And and, and, and the I think... The slutty big bird costume, I think, that was mentioned in that yeah, show. Yeah, it took the cake. <laughs> and this one had, I think, a slutty Care Bear costume as its, uh, you know, click on me. That would be really um, hot. Link. And... You need to send me that link. I'm... I didn't send it to you because it was <laughs> so a, a frumpy, nasty librarian had written it or whatever, just talking about, you know, they've taken this holy holiday and commercialized <laughs> it with people dressing as a sexy Pikachu and all that. And it's like Pikachu is is just a delightful, universal Japanese character. And, and to take him out of that context and put him on a pretty girl, how dare you? And And I was just like, you guys... Who cares? I, I again, it's, it's like okay, if you think it's unright to wear a Pikachu costume, you know that shows cleavage or whatever, then don't wear it. But and so I became angry instead of amused. I thought I would be amused because it, and, and I also, I know this is a tangent, I but it was one of those where it's like here's ten inappropriate Halloween costumes you shouldn't buy, but it it only. It showed none when you clicked on the link. <laughs> you had to you click, had to through, click the, through the va the gallery. Oh, the bastards! I hate that so much. And you and I had well, you had vowed, I'm never going to do that again. I'm not I'm not going to click through it and watch your ad pop up on every single one of them, ever again. If it's worth me reading, you will present it in a way in which I can read it, and I don't get carpal tunnel, and you don't get a thousand dollars from all my clicks. And and I you know I have to support that. But there were a couple, like there was one with just like big baby and it was, you know, like a, something that a fat guy could wear or, you know, just a, a dude, but it's like a... Is it the big baby from Toy Story 3? No, no. He's it was an eye and he's really creepy? It was just like an inflatable, I'm a baby and I'm in a diaper kind of thing that you'd get inside and just like, oh, you know, the, the childhood innocence is... And I was like, it's a costume. Who cares? It's a fun... It's funny. That a grown man is dressed as a baby. I, do you not understand that the? It's not that difficult to understand that you see a dude, a fifty-year-old guy, walk into a party wearing this, you would laugh. But this person that wrote the article just like ah, oh. and then there was yeah, there was one where it was like a, a sexy schoolgirl costume. And I'm sorry, there's not a man, woman, or child alive that doesn't find that attractive. And this person was so upset about, you know, with all the things that go wrong in our school system, we've got to have a 23-year-old supermodel dressed as a schoolgirl. And I was well, like, yes, it's not 16 yes, year old we do. Spears anymore. I mean, a 23-year-old at least is legal. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, there's a barrier. There's a gulf between... I'm doing sign language you right are. now for I don't know fear what's going of on. for fear of offending anybody. I don't I don't speak sign language. I'm sorry. I guess you can't say that you speak sign. You I don't know sign language. We'll just say that because you don't speak it. You gesticulate it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Anyhow, I was just disappointed by the article because it, it's it, by showing a Care Bear, a girl, a, a pretty, slutty girl in a Care Bear costume. I was I clicked on the link. Which achieved what they wanted. Even if it's like decrying the evils, you know, that and how corrupt this great druid holiday has become, they still got their money because I clicked on every single dang one of those. But I didn't share 
which is what they wanted. They wanted me to click through them all and then share it with all of my Facebook friends who would do the same. And I didn't do that. Good job. At least you managed to only partially destroy humanity by clicking through all this crap instead of completely destroy it by sharing it on. It was interesting. I didn't click on this link myself, but I saw one. A friend of a friend clicked on this one. No, I, I just saw the, the headline and the picture. It was like the Care Bear picture. It was less appealing to me, of course, because it was guy's version it's like here look we can make slutty guy costumes too hmm. and it was a bunch of dudes uh, they had a shot where like three dudes were in one shot and they were all wearing like little costumes that had like suspenders and they were shirtless and all this kind of stuff and i thought oh all right equal opportunity i guess I i'm i'm pretty sure that it was a similar thing to what you were talking about we're like oh yeah you think it's okay for girls well we'll show you how bad it is but it, if it, men do this, it's not against the law for a guy to dress as to like a sure sexy was... firefighter or anything. Yeah, that stuff yeah, like... no, I, I, I'm what? not exactly sure what the deal was with it. I didn't click on it to find out what they were saying. I'm afraid you took the high road, sir, and uh, and yeah, the... that's one of those things that kind of bugs me. You know, they, you'll see a lot of these these things where they they try to show how it's ridiculous. The sexualization of, you know, the women are sexualized in all advertising and stuff like that, right? And they'll say, oh, yeah, well, what if a man was shown this way? And so they'll show some dude doing, like, recreating the same picture, but as a dude. But the, the deal with it is that the, the picture with the woman is always like a supermodel chick. And then the picture with the man is like a hairy, fat guy doing the same thing. I wonder... If they got an equivalent model, what the difference would be, you know what I mean? If they had some svelte, like, freaking ripped dude, you know, with, like, a washboard stomach wearing, you know, in that same picture, would it make a difference? But that, this is totally aside. This is, yeah, a, this is a huge that... tangent off of our Halloween thing, so we're just going to forget that I said this stuff and get back to... Well, well, let's. What were we getting back to? Let's just let people go their way. We'll come back tomorrow and we'll we'll try and talk about something Halloween year. Um, <laughs> this was basically our. Do you remember what you called it? Intro to spookiness. Yes, That's right. it was the uh, the basically just the show to say, hey, here's a little taste of what you're going to get. And unfortunately, now people will not listen to the rest of them because of this. Well, that's okay. You know, we don't have a lot of pop-up ads or revenue coming in on this thing. So, you know, that's whether great. they listen or they don't, we get the same amount of money. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a good way to look at it. All right. So I, I guess we'll, we'll put it to an end. Anything more you want to say about costumes and spending money and whatever the heck it is we're talking about? Well, okay. One last tiny thing and then we'll let you go your way. Okay. See, I didn't understand once I became a teenager that... The point of Halloween is no longer to be as scary as you can be, but to be attractive to the opposite sex. Um, I didn't realize that. I, I was naive. I was I was raised in on a farm, uh, and so we at, at our school we were having a Halloween dance, and I wanted to go to it. You know, he's like, "Oh, neat! Halloween is the best you know holiday, and 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 there's a dance, and I'm going to go to it." So I put on just like this really revolting, like you know zombie leper monster costume or whatever thinking why well, everybody be like wow oh you're scared you really went all out and yeah i had previously been too cool for school and all that stuff but i was trying to get into it trying to show people hey people are going to notice me because i went all i i really tried to honor this holiday like i did when i was a kid and and i got there and yeah i found out to my chagrin that it is I'm going to be a sexy Ariel from Little Mermaid, or I'm going to be a sexy Miss... Miss... Mrs. Doubtfire. No. I'm... <laughs> okay, a sexy Mrs. Doubtfire. That's, that's, that's odd. <laughs> but, you know, I'm going to be like Tarzan, and I'm going to show off my abs and all that stuff, and my, my, my big old arms, or I'm going to... You know, it wasn't how scary can you be, but it's like gives the girls the opportunity to pretty themselves up, to go way out, to, you know, push up bra and all that stuff. And gives the guys, you know, an opportunity to hit on these girls and that, and and to go shirtless for, it for was, no good reason. It was not a good dance. I didn't have fun, and I, yeah, it was just the like the two I, people that you did dance with were so revolted by your costume they accidentally vomited on you. You couldn't hold it back. 
We'll say that would have been some attention. <laughs> but no, it was it was it, it, it was it was not a humiliating experience, but it was just no fun. And so there, that that was the lesson that I learned for the whole teenagehood. And and like you were saying, what what is a, a kid who's too old to trick or treat do? You know, I I don't know. I mean, maybe there there are school dances or things like that, but but not for me, kids. <laughs> They're writing songs of love, but not for me. Okay. Thank you for listening to our six days of Valentine's Day (laughs) marathon. With that, we're going to uh, pinch it off. (laughs) Okay. Yes. We're going to move on to the next episode. We're just going to chill till the next episode, actually. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy the rest of our 13th annual 13 Nights of Halloween. I hope we enjoy it, too. (laughs) Good night. And I'll get ice cream if I say this? That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons non-commercial 3.0 license. There! Chocolate now! Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. You're a great zombie. Good times here at the Waterfront Village. Open for the next 11 days.